All right. Perfect. Um, how are you guys doing today? Okay, so I'll, I'll admit people as I go, or are you on as well? To she's, she's the one. Uh, I'll, let you, I'll let you do the drive. And then I'll let you do your own thing. All right. Participants. Sorry, guys. Where am I? Then you don't have to worry about it. I'll do it. Perfect. Okay, well, let's get started. I think hybrid meetings are always kind of fun because I'll, I'll talk to the computer, then I'll talk to you guys, and we'll go back and forth. Um, so I have been a real estate agent in Austin for going on 22, 23 years. I've never seen a market like where we're experiencing. And I think those of us that have been around for a while or those of us that are new to the business, as we're talking to people, there's a lot of people that want to talk about the market. So we're not going to spend the whole time talking about the market because I think most of us are sort of tired of like, this is where we are. And this is what we're doing. But here's what I'm finding is that 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 how's the market question that we get often is a great entry point to introduce yourself as a professional. So my, my recommendation, this is not homework related. This just off. You know, this is something that I've trained to and taught to and, and have had great success with myself is being in a position where you, you have some data, some insight, intel on what's going on in the market. And you can present to whoever's asking you about the market something relevant. And when they're asking you, how's the market? And they want to have that market conversation. Oftentimes what's going on is they're, they're maybe considering a move. And, and it's kind of a test, right? They want to hear, do you have an understanding and do you have a solution in this market? And, and I think that where we are today is a record low inventory. I don't think I have to go too far down the road of letting you know that. Um, I've talked to a, a lot of builder friends of mine uh, and, and new home starts is the way we get out of this, right? And, and they're convinced that this is going to be a while before we're out of the short supply. So it's the market we find ourselves in. And, and here's what I find. There are two types of agents in a market like this. There are agents who continue on uh, doing the same tired things, expecting different results. And there are agents who adapt to the market, find solutions. I believe that Homeward is a solution that's going to help you help your clients make a move in this market. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to give you an introduction to Homeward. It'll be 30 minutes or so of me talking, which is way more uh, than, than I would like, but, but I think I wanna cover some important content. And then I wanna hear from you. And, and I think if I'm able to hear from the folks online, I wanna do some Q and A. And I think at some point about halfway through, we've got lunch showing up. And so those that are here, you guys can grab lunch and we'll just make it an informal Q and A. I, I think if, if we spend an hour together, the first 30 minutes is really learning time. The second 30 minutes is where you really, really learn through asking questions and, and gaining a deep enough understanding of what we do. So this is intro to home release seat. Does that, how do I change to the next? There we go. All right. Uh, so as an agent broker, I think uh, myself, I, I think that there's a lot of agents that are saying a lot of the same things and trying to get business. And, and we want to help you stand out in a sea of sameness meaning that, that most real estate agents are offering the same thing to their clients. They've got open houses, they've got virtual tours, they've got the things that we do are pretty common among most agents, but that's not what's helping clients win in this market. So we wanna help you stand out from your competition by providing you a cash offer that you can bring to your clients. Every one of your clients, whether they have a home to sell or not, is able to become a pure cash buyer with our program. You're gonna leave this time together, hopefully with a deep enough understanding of what we do, that you can begin to engage with this solution in your business. I don't think that we'll go from being fairly unaware of what we do here at Homeward to fully fluent in a one hour conversation. I wanna get you to enough fluency that you can begin to introduce this to your clients. And then I have a whole team of people called Homeward Advisors. And, and when you scan the QR code that's on your table or you, on the screen for those that are online, uh, you'll be able to set up an agent account. Once you've set up an agent account, you're assigned to a Homeward Advisor who can then Stay in touch with you. And when you have a client that's ready to go, the Homeward Advisor is there to have that conversation with you and with the client. So that's an important piece of what we're going to do is we're going to give you enough information to, to be aware of the solution and begin to introduce the solution to your clients and ask answer the high-level questions. But the thing I really want to teach you is, hey, let me get a Homeward Advisor to connect with you and answer all of your questions. So that's going to be the best way forward. We, we'd like to do these as a three-way call between you and the client. We call it a homeward huddle. 
And, and that gives you the opportunity to hear our advisors answer your questions for your clients. So you, so you get to learn there as well. So this is kind of step one. Step two is when you introduce clients, begin to become familiar. And then from there, once you've been through a transaction and you understand how this program works, um, Oh, there we go. Okay. Yep. Um, so I lost my train of thought, but we'll move on because I will continue to talk. Uh, so here's where we're headed. We're going to talk about the homeward way. So what is it that we do? How, what, is the, what is the problem that we solve and, and why are we solving it? Uh, then we're going to talk about how we solve the problem, which is through our buy before you sell and buy with cash solutions. And then we're going to talk about what does it look like to work with homework? What, where do we fit into your business? And then from there, uh, getting started. So I'm going to give you some very clear next steps to, to begin to uh, integrate this into your business. All right, let's see. Yeah, the there we go. Now I've got this figured out. Yeah. All right. So the Homeward Way. Uh, Homeward was started by real estate agents for real estate agents. Our founder and CEO is a realtor himself. Uh, I'm a realtor. We started this company specifically to... Well, I'll take a step back. What we do every single morning at this company is we wake up asking, how can we use the cash that we have access to, to solve your greatest problems as real estate agents? Because we ran into the same problems over and over again, where we have clients that want to buy a home, but they don't want to list with us until they know where they're going to go, but they can't secure a home that they're going to go to until they've sold their home. So they're stuck in what I call the vortex of ineffectiveness. They can't, they can't move, they want to move. And when I look at a Google map and I see, you know, thousands and thousands of houses in Austin, I'm convinced that most of the people that own those homes would love to move, but they don't know how. And so we're here to help you help them understand how, and that's where you lock, unlock just massive potential in uh, generating new business and having an opportunity to serve more people in the future. So we raised, uh, just last year, we raised just over $500 million. This is a lot of money and that's a lot of millions and I can't even compute that in my head, but it's a lot of money that's set aside specifically for you to use to help your clients buy with cash. Uh, we've seen massive growth. We're in another growth cycle right now. We're seeing you know, lots and lots of people that are realizing that to be a cash buyer is almost requisite in this market. A good friend of mine listed a home around the corner from my house. And after the first weekend, I called him because you know, I assumed they had multiple offers. And um, he said, we had 22 offers. We had seven cash and 15 non-contenders. Oh. And to me that like, and, and I know that he knows I'm the cash guy. So maybe he was just like giving me, you know, some, some uh, talking points, but, but I do believe that that's how a lot of listing agents are, are presenting offers to their clients. Like, Hey, here's the cash ones. And here's the other ones. If we have to go there. Right. So it's, it's just the market we're in and we're really glad to be able to provide this solution. Uh, it doesn't mean that every single one of our offers wins every weekend. You know, we, we do have ones that, you know, come up short, but we're more likely to win with cash than you would be without. So our, our company is really built around this cash offer. We also recognize that real estate transactions are expensive uh, for the consumer. And we're trying to mitigate costs while also making a better experience by integrating mortgage and title. So the clients can use whatever mortgage company they want. They can use whatever title company they want. They do have... Uh, some, some discounting in our fees, which we'll talk about in a bit when they use uh, internal mortgage and internal title. So here's the two different programs we offer and we're really creative at naming things. So you've got buy before you sell and then you've got buy with cash. So, so buy before you sell is for that client who wants to buy before they sell. Buy with cash is for that client who is a, a can finance contingent home buyer. They're maybe a first time buyer, somebody that wants to buy a home uh, and they've just been outbid, they can't compete in this market. So we're going to talk through both of these today, give you a deep enough understanding of how they work functionally uh, that you're going to be able to begin to introduce this to your, your clients that, that are a fit. So again, the benefits of working with us are you stand out from your competition, stand out from the sea of sameness. Uh, you turn your contingent buyers into cash buyers uh, and you're going to win more offers. Cash is five times, well, the stat here is four times. We just got updated stats. It's five times more likely to win than finance in this market. The benefits to your clients, and this, I'm going to go from right to left here. They, 
they're more likely to win, which I think if you have clients that are tired in this market of coming in second, it seems like they're always in second, right? Um, this is going to give them the opportunity to, to move into that first spot. When the market cools down, I think what we do still has a tremendous amount of value. And the fact that we can create a calmer, more like a more logical experience for the client. When you think about it, if somebody's selling and buying, it, it's always nicer if you can just go buy and move into the new home and then sell the old one later. We had a client that had an iguana room. If you can imagine walking into a listing appointment, somebody has an iguana room. I don't know if you've been around an iguana, but they don't smell good. They don't make anything more sellable anywhere ever. And so this client moved out. They got probably 10 to 15% more for the home they were selling because they were able to de-iguana the house and turn it into <laughs> back into an office, make it smell nice. They got multiple offers and they, they were able to get a much higher price than they would have had they not been able to move out of it first. So and, and how many of you guys, just to show of hands, had that client, you walk into the listing appointment, you're like, oh, we got to get these people out of here. All the time. It happens. So they can have a calmer, more convenient experience. Uh, they can move on their terms, their timeline. They're in control versus being at the whim of the market. And then the best thing that we do is this is all built around you. Like ideally, your customer never knows we even exist. Now, of course, we do we we do step in we're we're you know engaging with them. So they do know we exist. So it's not like we want to keep it secret. But like I really want you to think about this as your own solution. I have an agent in Houston that does open houses and and that's his primary lead gen source, uh, lead generation. And so people walk into an open house, he says, Hey, let's buy this home. And they're like, Well. All right, he says, let's buy the home with cash. That's all he says. You like it? Okay, let's buy it with cash. And they always say, well, I, I can't. He goes, well, I have access to cash. I can help you do that. Let me show you how. And then like right there on the spot, he's got another client. And most of the clients actually are, isn't that great? Most of the clients are actually nosy neighbors, right? When you do an open house, 50% of your traffic is nosy neighbors that are just driving by. They're not really shopping for a home, but they're thinking about it and they've got a home to sell. So what a great opportunity to say, hey, I can help you buy your next home with cash. And then we'll tend to listing and selling your old home later. So, so this is all built around you. And I want you to see it as your own and, and use it as your own. I mean, we have, uh, we have agents that have, have done, I've got an agent in San Antonio. He's a funny guy. His last name is Maloof, but he, he's created a, a series of videos called Maloof Money. And so he talks and he's done a bunch of social media. He's like, he's just one of those guys, like he's not afraid to get out there a little bit and, and, uh, you know, it works for him and he's just, and he's a really nice guy. It's really interesting. So, uh, so use this as your own leverage. As you start thinking and dreaming about what you can do, like if you had access to all the cash in the world, what would you do in your business today? Well, you do. So let's, let's roll. All right. So buy before you sell. Here's how it works. Your clients are going to apply with us. That application takes them 20 to 30 minutes. We're going to ask for everything that a traditional mortgage lender would ask for. Plus we're going to get some information on their old home. We're going to want a couple of photos of their old home. They don't need to be show ready. It's just like, we just need to see that they have walls and a ceiling and, you know, flooring that looks, it looks easy. It helps us assess value. What we're doing at this point is we're assessing, is their current home going to sell? And do they qualify for a mortgage? Well, yes, their old home is going to sell. We also want to know what it's going to sell for, because that's where we determine how much equity they have. So we say, Hey, we've got a client that has a $400,000 home. They owe 200,000 on it because they bought it like an hour ago for 250. <laughs> right. Um, so they've got all this equity. So we've got, they've got $200,000 worth of equity. And then we run through their mortgage application. Let's say they qualify for a $300,000 home, a $300,000 mortgage. So now we've got a $500,000 buyer because we put those two things together. And we look at this as this is a $500,000 buyer. So we've now earmarked $500,000 of our cash to go purchase a home for them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's, that's what we do. Now, because we're writing a cash contract to purchase a home, our underwriting process is a little more involved than your traditional lender who might do a prequal and give you an hour, an hour later, give you an offer or a, a, a prequal letter. So it's going to take some time. We, we do the full underwriting of the file beforehand. And right now we're in our busy season. As you guys can imagine, this is the time of year where everybody's raised their hands and said, I want to buy a house. So our, our approval turn times are a little bit stretched, uh, but we're doing our best to keep as many people running through that process as possible. But once they're approved with us, they're fully underwritten. We can make a cash offer. We can close 10, 15 days later. So you have an approved client. This is when it gets to kind of like normal. You're going to go show them homes like you normally would. And they're going to see a home and they're going to say, that's the one I want. And we're going to make an offer. So we have a process for making the offer where you go back into your dashboard, which we're going to talk about in a bit. 
and you request an offer. When you've requested the offer, <clears throat> our team is going to send you offer instructions. You're going to go into zip form, DocuSign, whatever software you use. You're going to fill out the contract and you're going to e-signature or DocuSign it to us. We're going to sign it and you're going to have a bona fide offer that you can present as a pure cash offer. So we make the offer to purchase. So we're the buyer in the transaction, the first transaction. We're making an offer. We want to win. Like we, we want you to win. We want to win. So we have a cover letter. We have information about Homeward. We have, we're willing to, and, and, and our team will offer to reach out to the listing agent if they have questions about what we do. Like we want to make this as appealing to the seller and as easy to use for the seller as the, for the listing agent as we possibly can. So the seller's going to accept our offer. That's the goal. Once they accept our offer, we're going through the process just like a normal buyer. We have an option period, which during our option period, we do, your clients go in and they do their inspections like they normally would. And we also do our preliminary appraisal. We ask for a six day option period. In some cases, we can waive that if we have a client who's very well qualified and can, and can move forward without needing to get the appraisal because we use that option period to do, to do our prelim appraisal. Yes, sir. What would make them a very well qualified client? I'll give you an example. We had one, um, the last one that I, I looked at, um, I'll just give you real numbers. So the, the client was buying uh, a million dollar home in Northwest Austin. They were selling a $900,000 home in Southwest Austin that they'd owned for 22 years. So you can imagine they've got about $800,000 worth of equity in the home in South Austin. They were buying a million dollar house. In their case, they had plenty of cash to cover any potential shortfall because they had the cash. So that that gave them the ability. We completely waived the option period. We waived any reason for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, we get asked all the time to sign appraisal waivers, and and we will, although they're not relevant documents, because they're they're pointing to the third party condition financing condition in them. Yep. I guess I'm confused. Like, obviously, if it's a multiple offer, they're going to offer more than this list. Mm -hmm. They're getting extra cash from their own cash. Yep. Okay. From, from the, the, we assume that the equity in their old home is their cash. Okay. Yep. Yep. So if they have, you know, if they got $50,000 in the bank and they've got $500,000 worth of equity and they're buying an $800,000 house, that, that's kind of a no brainer. Like, yeah. these folks are going to have enough cash to cover whatever the shortfall on a price still is. Um, so that, that's not always the case, and it's not the standard that we move forward with, but if you have a situation where you need to get a tighter option period, let's, let's talk about it. Um, the, the, you know, ideally, we get a six-day option period because it gives us an opportunity to do the appraisal. So we do a prelim desktop appraisal that comes back within five days. We use that as the, the number to make decisions on because your clients may or may not want to move forward if the appraisal comes in significantly less than the contract price. They may not be able to move forward. And so we put that protection in there, which is really nice. I mean, how many of you guys have had a client, you get through the option period, they start packing their boxes, they're super excited. They're like, this is our home. They're like tears, they're calling mom, they're scheduling their housewarming party only to get the appraisal like three days before closing. And now they're back to looking again. And it's like heartbreaking. So, so we avoid that heartbreak by doing the appraisal during the option period, which to me is like reason enough alone to work with homework. Be able to get that appraisal back. Uh, and people always ask us how we do that. I'll give you the the uh, insight. Uh, we pay our appraisers a ton of money to be at the ready to do whatever we want them to do. Cash is king. Cash is king. Cash. Yeah. When you raise five hundred million dollars, people somehow listen to you more. Um, what do you have on the six day options? What do you guys have? Uh, I I should I should look into that. It it really depends. Um, I mean, I, I've seen we did have a. $50,000 option check the other day. I know it made me sick to my stomach, but um, they really wanted that house. And that's how they communicated it. Um, and they got it. Now they did a $10 earnest money. But um, I don't know. Do you know what's what's our, have you? I'm still saying 500, yeah. 750, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, but big earnest, but big, but big earnest money. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, here's, here, here's the, the, the short and, and somewhat rhetorical question there is like, what it's going to take to win? Okay. Let's do it. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. So, as a buyer's agent, when we're negotiating, we're here talking to us, are we negotiating for you or the client that's mm. the one in charge of all that? And you're the so, 
the way this works, it's, it's almost, it's two kind of parallel tracks running together. So we, we, uh, we get an offer accepted. So now we're the buyer, Homer is the buyer, the Joneses are the sellers. Your clients are the Smith family. They're gonna be buying back from us. So the second that we get a homeowner contract with the Joneses to buy, we're gonna turn around and sign a second contract between us and the Smiths, your clients. They're gonna operate under their contract, which has a mirroring option period, mirroring close date. Everything in these two contracts mirror each other. Saving except for uh, their purchase close date is further out. It's either six months down the road if they're buy before you sell, or it's 30 days out if they're buy with cash. And the price is increased by our convenience fee, which we're going to talk about in just a bit. Right. Mm -hmm. well, so as long as the house is habitable and will pass the appraisal for the final financing. So if it's like VA, you've got the requirements there, but we're not going to buy a house that's going to fall down. Right. Um, but really your clients are calling the shots on what they want repaired. So really it's them driving. Uh, very, it's very, very, very rare that we step in and say, hey, we need these repairs in addition to what your clients want. Um, very rare. But but we do look at every single inspection report because we're the buyer. Uh, but your clients are the ones calling the shots. The way I, the way I describe this is, is you're driving the car, they're telling you where to go, and we're just the engine. So, so we close on the property. We're cash. It's pretty easy to close. We close. Your clients get to move in at this point. They're living in the home, enjoying the home as if it's their own while they list and sell their existing home. Once they've sold that home, they are then in a position to be able to buy back from us. And then they close on their mortgage, they close on the loan, and they now own the home. So this process, they can get their loan wherever they want. Yep, yep. And I'll, I'll touch on kind of why they might want to work with us. So, and I just realized there's some people popping into the chat. Are you able to see the chat? Yeah, I mean, so far it was just the mute thing. And then they're okay. talking about getting a copy of this presentation. Yes, so yep, we'll yep. You have, you're welcome to share this, yep. yep. Um, are we recording this by chance? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool, excellent. Um, you're always a step ahead of me, I love it. Um, so then your clients buy back from us. So we'll talk about mortgage and how that fits in here in just a sec. So what does this cost? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, quick question. So when you said that homework buys their home, and then the client can move in. Are it before they buy it back from homeward? Are mm -hmm. they leasing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they, they have a lease with us, which I'm gonna I'll, I'll talk about it, how we calculate that lease here in just okay. a sec. Um, but yeah, they get to move into it now. One of the questions that often pops up at this point: Can we do seller leasebacks? Because that's kind of a thing mm -hmm. that sellers want a leaseback, and yes, we can do a seller leaseback, and we can actually do sometimes extended seller leasebacks above and beyond what typically would be the case because your clients actually aren't closing till later. So the leaseback is with us and the, the seller, they can stay in the home and then your clients aren't gonna buy back till later. So, so the, the clock that starts ticking on a leaseback, that 60 day clock for the financing only starts when they buy back from us. So we've had three, four month long, five month long leasebacks and that can work. So, so we- how much the lease back is? It's a preset. Well, the lease your your clients get to decide that. So that's the negotiation between your client and the the seller. And, and really, again, I think the answer to that is like whatever it takes to get it done. Okay. So we're amenable to whatever. Um, so what does this cost? So we have a standard convenience fee of one point nine percent. So we sign a contract for five hundred thousand dollars. Your clients are going to sign a contract back with us back, to buy it back from us at five zero nine five. So we're buying for 500, they're buying back for 5095. That $9,500 is how we make money. That's our fee for service. Let me let me touch base on that real quick. Sure. I've talked to a couple agents thinking through this and they're like, God, that seems so expensive. But guys, if it's not big picture, right? Mm -hmm. If it means they get to buy a house before prices continue to rise and rates continue to rise, yep. or if they get to buy because they have a home to sell and they need to get that cash out. Plus, if they do have a home to sell, they, like he like talked about, they can take their time, stage it, and get more money for it yep. instead of trying to sell quickly for the first person who will take it because they got to get them home, right? So yep. if, if your client's educated, they're going to see the big picture and get that. So mm -hmm. I don't want you guys to, to worry about the fee because for mm -hmm. the right buyer, it makes total sense. Yep. All the sense of the world. Yeah. I have a question, and I'll ask this to the crowd here and even online if you guys want to chime in. I'm, I'm, a, I'm all ears. Um, how many of you have had a listing recently that received multiple offers? Okay. Yeah. So most of the hands in the room. 
when you receive those multiple offers, if you had, let's say five cash offers, five financing contingent offers, and then one home sale contingent offer, how much more would that home sale contingent offer have to be to beat out the cash offer? Percentage wise. Or could it? I mean, would it? I mean, like, like there's a price at which somebody's willing to like roll the, roll the dice, right? So if I got a $500,000 listing and I've got offers at 600,000 that are cash, how much does that, that home sale contingent offer have to be to win? Like 650, 700? Yeah. A lot more than 1.4%, right? So I think that you make a stronger offer with a cash offer. And, and then and the net, at the, and that's where you guys have, have to be able to explain this to a client in that moment. We're happy to help. Our customer experience team are all uh, experienced realtors. They understand how to help you explain this to a client. So we can help you in that moment, explain to the client why 1.4% or, well, I say 1.4 because when they use our mortgage company, we give them a discount in the convenience fee. It shows up as a seller credit at closing. Um, so that's most of our clients end up using our mortgage company, but it's not requisite. Yep. Is there a convenience fee? Is that what other companies usually do charge? Uh, we've got a couple of competitors in the market that I'm, I'm watching, and, and they're anywhere from one and a half to three percent. The ones that are the lower price ones typically charge agent referral fees or have their own in house agents, but the ones that are open source like us typically they're they're a little more expensive than what we're doing. Yep. Well, we look at what our costs are and what is a reasonable margin for us. So, um, and we're working on a couple of things that, that may potentially kind of bring that down. So we're, we're trying to find this, the ways to make this more efficient. Uh, and we actually have some really fun stuff in the, in the pipeline that we'll be hopefully announcing soon. So while we own the home, they're paying rent. That was one of the questions earlier is, is they, they are they renting from us? Yes. So that's a cost that, um, actually I'm going to, I'm going to talk about buy with cash and I'll come back to the rent here in a second. So buy with cash is our product are offering for clients who are buying a home, but they don't have a home to sell. They're just a straight up buyer and they want to upgrade to become a cash buyer. So we step in their place, we buy the home for them and then we turn around and sell it right back to them. So they apply just like normal. In this case, it's just a straight up mortgage application. If they qualify for mortgage, they qualify for us, what we do. We make the cash offer, we purchase the home, they move into it, they then finalize their mortgage and then buy back from us. Now we have to do an in-person inspection, and this is actually about to change, I believe, where desktop appraisals are going to be uh, uh, allowed for final closings. And so we're working on how we, uh, how we work with lenders to make that happen. But uh, once we close on the property, at that point, we can do our final appraisal inspection where the appraiser actually goes through and they measure and they do their thing and they take the pictures and they create the report. That takes a couple of weeks to get that report back. And then once we get that report back, it's a couple of weeks from there to closing. So I, I tell people, expect a 30-day close so it's 30 days where we own the home before they buy back from us. During that process, they're renting from us, which I'm going to talk about rent in a second. But this is a, a really straightforward process, and it helps a client upgrade from being financed to cash purchasers. So what does this cost? This program is actually much more efficient from us, for us because we have two things, lower risk, because we're not, we're not contingent on the sale of another home, and we can move quickly. So we, we put the money out, we get the money back. We're able to take that 1.9% convenience fee that we charge on every transaction and discount that down to zero, i.e. we give them a 1.9% credit when they utilize our mortgage company. So if you're clients that are buy with cash, so those first time home buyers that are finance contingent buyers, they can upgrade to become a cash buyer at virtually zero cost. The only cost to them is rent for that one month that they're in the rental period, but they're living in the home, they're enjoying the home. It's as if it's their own home at that point also. So how does rent work? When, when we buy a home for a client, it costs us money, as you can imagine. It costs us money to, to buy it, it costs us money to hold it. All we're doing is passing through our cost of owning the home to your clients. So we raise this $500 million from investors who expect kind of an interest rate return on their money. So we, we pass that through to your clients. They're basically covering our, our carrying cost of owning the asset. We prorate the taxes uh, and the uh, HOA dues to mirror between the two closings so that so they're getting the, they're going to reimburse us for taxes at closing essentially. And then um, the uh, rental rate. And so you can write this down the way that we calculate rent. It's the purchase price times 0 0.0072. So if we're buying a $500,000 home, the rental rate is $3,500 a month. It's 3472 technically. But, 0 .0072. So, mm -hmm, times the purchase price. 
And then once you get over a million, it starts to taper down. But if you plan on that 0.0072, that probably gets you get you pretty close. And it, 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 at worst case scenario, your client's expectations are exceeded if they go over a million. Okay. So we don't mark it up. We don't make any money on the rent. We've actually structured it where we lose a slight, of, a little bit of money. So what that does is it aligns our interest with the clients. So we want them to buy back as quickly as possible. We want to get our money back so we can go buy another house for somebody else. So the quicker we turn our money, the, the, the better off we are. They don't pay until the end of the process because we know that they're making a mortgage payment or a rent payment on their current house. And double payments oftentimes makes it where people, you know, it, it would really stretch your budget, right? And so they don't pay until the end of the process. We square up at closing. And then uh, it's prorated to the exact number of days. So if we buy a home and then 28 days later, they're buying back from us or 45 days or 65 days, whatever the number of days is, they only pay for the rent for the days that we own the home. Now, if they have a lease back, if they give a free lease back, they still do pay us the rent for our ownership period. And they just, you know, it's just part of the, I would just consider that as like part of the cost of a buying in this market. So what does it look like to work with us? So at, at this point, you know, I've given you the, the overview of the, the two different offerings. We have buy before you sell, buy with cash. We're solving a real need. And I think, you know, I'm getting a lot of head nods along the way. So I, I'm, I'm assuming that you guys see where this fits, but I want to do what I call the reticular activator. Are you guys familiar with the reticular activator? It's, it's the part of your brain that separates relevant and irrelevant data. So if you bought a new car recently, when you're driving, driving home from the dealership, every other car on the road is the same car you just bought, right? They were there all along. You just didn't see them because it wasn't relevant to you. Now it's relevant. Um, our brain sorts, I think it's 13,000 different data points a day. You're driving down the road, billboards, you're sitting in a room, like in this room right here, you don't know if it's hot or cold until you think about it. And now all of you are thinking about if whether this room is too hot or too cold. Um, but you don't think about it until it's relevant to you, significantly cold or significantly hot, right? So, so what I want to do is I want to walk through a reticular activator process with you where you start thinking about those clients you have and you start to see your you'll start to it, like it'll unlock for you opportunity as you think about your current clients you think about your past clients you think about those clients that you want to go get where does this fit into the equation so investors how many of you have worked with or work with investors right now most of you yeah so investors it's a great solution for an investor most investors are finance contingent some investors are selling a property and buying another property and utilizing a 1031 this is a great solution. This fits really well with an investor because we can go secure their new home with cash and then they can go sell that old property and then buy it back from us. We fit perfectly with the 1031 exchange. We do that all the time. We have the opportunity to, to help them go secure that next home with a cash offer, even if they're finance contingent, which is really, really powerful for an investor who wants to get a fair deal on a home. Move up buyers. This is that client who wants to buy a home. They've got a home to sell. Maybe you helped them buy a home four or five years ago. They're ready to move perfect opportunity to, to get them off the fence and get them into the game. Downsizing buyers. We had a, a client recently, I thought that was a really sweet story. Uh, I actually talked to the lady uh, when she started the process and then she called me afterwards to thank us. Uh, she was a widow, recent widow. She was living in a home that she had been in for 25 years with her family. She uh, worked for the state. And she was ready to retire. She had about $800,000 worth of equity in the old home. She just wanted about a three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollar condo in North Austin. So we went and bought her a condo. She moved into it. She then listed and sold the old home. She was in a position where she had accumulated a lot of stuff. She needed to get all that stuff out of there in order to list and sell that old home for top dollar. So she got top dollar. She netted her eight hundred grand cash. She paid us back in cash, and she retired. And she sent us the sweetest little thank you note that thank you guys for helping me get to retirement. I didn't know how I was going to get there. So really, really cool. So downsizing works. First-time home buyers, obviously, in this market, they're oftentimes non-contenders. Uh, that hesitant client, you know, when you meet somebody and and you get to talking about the market, how's the market, and you offer to them a solution to help them move, all of a sudden they become interested potential buyers for you and sellers, like they're, they're both sides. Uh, competitive listing prospect. How many of you go to a listing appointment and you're interviewing against other agents? Most of those listing appointments you go to, that's really a buyer. Who has the necessity of selling a home now we're excited about listings today right as agents but they're really excited about buying a home and when you can go and maybe you're interviewing against other agents and you can present to them hey i have a program where we can help you buy first and sell later most of them are all ears at that point 
And so it gives you a leg up on your competition in those competitive situations. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but like the, the lead you meet in open houses and that's kind of where I'll, I'll, I'll finish going through this list. But I want you to start thinking about the clients you have. Uh, my buddy Grant in Houston, his open house thing is like genius. Hey, you wanna buy this house? Let's do it with cash. And then boom, their clients right there on the spot. So, so think about your, 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 your last year of business, your next year of business, start thinking about where we fit. And I think you'll be surprised how often you, you, you can talk about what we do and generate more business. Quick aside, we buy homes from 200,000 up to 3 million. So it's an important data point. The one and a half to $2 million price range is, is the tightest inventory in our market right now, which is just, as my South African friend would say, bananas. Yeah. So um, the homes that we buy must be considered habitable. We don't buy mobile homes and we don't buy farms and ranches. The farm and ranch piece is a little bit nebulous by design because we want to look at every opportunity we can. But if it's on a farm contract, farm and ranch contract, rather than a one to four family, um, it's a little bit of a red flag, but we have some ways to work through that. So, so bring them to us. Once you get into you know, a property that has no comps because it's like a very unique ranch property out in the middle of nowhere, that's probably a non-go, a no-go for us, but, but we'll, we'll do everything. We, our, our philosophy is let's try to see if we can fit it in the box. And if we can, we'll do it. All right, so you're gonna set up an agent dashboard. So how many of you have the QR code? And I'm gonna, those that are online, I'm gonna to get to it in just a second so you'll be able to see it. But um, in this agent dashboard, you're able to see all of your clients. You're able to see where they are in the process. You're able to uh, get updates. You're able to get new clients started. And this is where you get a client started. So when you look at this agent dashboard, you'll see get a new client started. You click that, you put the information in. Once your client's information is in our system, they're going to receive an email from us. They're going to, you're going to receive a call. Your clients are going to receive a call. We're going to get everybody comfortable with what we're doing, and then they can move forward with that application. Once you have a client approved in our process, or even slightly before they're approved, you can even make an offer request at that point. You make an offer request. That triggers for our team to say, hey, this client's ready to make an offer. We get you offer instructions. Our team is at the ready to help answer questions and get that offer signed so that you can make that. Because it's always a rush, right? And always at like seven o'clock on a Saturday night. Our team works until eight o'clock signing offers. Uh, sometimes they're there till nine, just depending on how many offers we have in the queue. But we're, we, we, recognize, we work realtor hours. We recognize that this market requires that you're available on the weekend. So we have weekend and evening coverage. So we're at the ready to make this happen. You can always view your client status and you have access to your primary point of contact for where your clients are in the process. So, so it's an easy go-to place to get updates, to move clients forward, to get questions answered and to get the help you need. So always think dashboard is the place to go first. And then from there, you'll be put in touch with and you'll have what you need to get started. All right, so what does it look like? How do you set up that dashboard, that agent account? The QR code is on the screen. So if you're at home, you're welcome to scan it. If you're here, you should have one on your table. And we would love for you to set up a dashboard. What this does is this gives you kind of the keys to the kingdom. It gets you assigned to a dedicated homeward advisor. They're going to send you an email. Once you set up the dashboard, you're going to be able to connect with them. You can schedule time on their calendar. They're trained and ready. Um, and I'm going to skip forward and then come back to that QR code. The homeward advisors are trained and ready to help you. They, they want to give you answers to your questions. Because I know the second I walk out of this room, there's going to be like a thousand questions. They're there to help you. They're there to onboard, get you set up, help you with marketing assets, help you with, you know, if you want to do a marketing blitz utilizing this, we have built within your agent dashboard, uh, social media, direct mail, postcards. I mean, you, you name it, we've, we've built it and it's all customizable through Canva. Do you guys, are you familiar with Canva? You use Canva? So our Canva, uh, when you get in there, you can drop in logos, name, make sure it's broker compliant, Right. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, you know what that means. If you don't, she's right here. Um, we can. Uh, so we, we want you to leverage this as your own. We want you to be out there promoting what you do and, and bringing us along for the ride. So. Home advisors are, are key and critical to what we do. And so you want to uh, lean into them. Once you have a client that's approved, they're going to be assigned to a customer experience manager. Our customer experience managers have a ton of experience and they're here to help you navigate the contract to close process. From offer to finish line, that's the customer experience manager. The homeward advisor is there to answer all your questions and help you get your client started. 
So once you're in the dashboard, you'll have access to marketing assets. You can click on resources and then the marketing assets. And we're constantly adding things there. I think we have 35 or 40 different things that you can download and customize today. Uh, we have a Facebook group that you can join. It gives you access to agents in other cities who are referring business back and forth. It gives you uh, updates on, on webinars that are coming up. So we have one, uh, I think it's this Thursday. Yeah, this Thursday um, where we're interviewing some top agents on how they leverage what we do in their business. How many a year are you seeing agents close with you? Uh, so we have, I have a lot of agents that are doing 10 to 12, 15 transactions a year with us. All right, there's your challenge, Urban. There you go. Yep. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, and you know, and these aren't agents that are selling hundreds of houses here. They're like, you know, I have uh, Kate is one of our agents. She sells forty houses a year. Fifteen of them are with us, and of those forty she's selling, when you think fifteen are with us, if they're list by clients, fifteen of her listings that I'm not counting in, in that fifteen are because we're her partner in business, right? So, so 30 of her 40 transactions are because of our value proposition, maybe 25. So uh, script book, I, when I started in the business, I was allergic to scripts. I thought that was so salesy. And, and I think most people go somewhere and you have some salesperson who clearly has a script and it feels unnatural and it's like off-putting. But here's what I did learn over the years is that if I know a question's coming, and I have an idea of what I want to say, when I say it from my heart, it just sounds better. So we have scripts that we've built that are helpful in every situation. If you're following up with your database, sphere of influence marketing. Um, I was a Buffini guy for my whole career. And so that's the philosophy I used in, in my business personally. And, and I think, you know, we've built some really good scripts. How do you follow up with past client? You send them something in the mail, you follow up with a phone call. Uh, open houses. Uh -huh. Pop by notes, calls, pop by as you got to count them every day. Um, and then, so those, those scripts are there for, for any scenario you find yourself. It's just a way to think about how you introduce what we do. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I found probably the most powerful thing in my personal career, and this is like, just in my personal event, uh, this is not part of the, the program here, but that how's the market question. I mean, when you introduce yourself as a realtor, they always ask, how's the market? Or they say in today's market, I bet you're making a million dollars based on, you know, they think that we're all just making a ton of money in this market. Um, what they don't know is that a ton of people got into our business. There's a lot of competition out there, but, uh, and we're working 10 times harder for our clients than we used to. Um, but having a, a scripted way to answer that question, the way I answer is, hey, this market is unique. We've never seen anything like this in Austin. We have very few homes available for sale. We have a lot of people buying them. We have people moving here by the bus load. But what I've done in my business is I've partnered with a company that allows me to turn all my clients into cash buyers. And when I do that, my clients win more often than not. So who do you know? Do you have any friends or family members that might be interested in becoming a cash buyer in this market? Let me know, I'll gladly follow up with them. Like, it's that simple. And at the end of the conversation, they're like, this is somebody who's smart, who's finding solutions, who's solving problems. I wanna refer them to my friends and family. And next thing you know, you've got a, you know, an advocate, you're their, their realtor for life. So um, anyways, that's just a quick aside. Uh, Homer Bound newsletter, every Friday morning, you'll you'll get a, a newsletter that has updates on what's going on in the industry. We're, we're pretty tapped in. Uh, our CEO was named the Inman Person of the Year last year. We are the headline sponsor of the Inman Connect Conference. Uh, and we're pretty connected within kind of what's going on on the, the cutting edge of real estate these days. So so we're, we're trying to give you as much information as we can through that newsletter. I know she did. I, I, I congratulated when I walked in. I'm, I'm so excited. That's really, really cool. And, and you know, it's interesting. I, I no, uh, well, I'll do this in front of everybody. So I walked in and I, I said, hey, she won. And I had some people say, deservedly so. So congratulations. You, you're, you're, you're doing a great thing here. I'm excited for you. Um, your help center and explainer videos are there online. So we have everything that you could possibly run into transactionally. We've thought about and we've created a video or content online that you can access and get your question answered. So if it's two in the morning and you're waking up and you're like, oh my gosh, I have a question about this for this client. It's there online, but also your home advisor and your customer experience managers are there to support you. All right, so that's it. That's the content. So I'll say thank you. Thank you for being with me for the last, I don't even have a clock. You know, we've been here for a bit, but thank you so much for locking in with me. I think these are great questions. Um, you guys, I think, are starting to get it, see how this fits. Um, 
thank you for what you do. I mean, I think in this market, people need realtors more now than ever. And when you sit at somebody's breakfast room table or you meet them at a coffee shop, you're providing them value and helping them accomplish something they wouldn't be able to accomplish without you. So, so keep doing that. Do it with, with, with confidence. Do it with pride of your work and, and keep doing it well. And keep bringing us to that table with you because we want to help you. So, all right. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. So once they apply, our typical, our, our approval turn times just, it, it ranges based on how many applications we have in the process. Right now we're three to five days. Um, some clients are taking a little bit longer, just depending on if we have to get more documents or if it's a complex file. So, so once we have a completed uh, file, I would say, you know, if you have somebody today, I'd have them apply today and you know this time next week they're they're able to go look and if they make an offer do an offer request one of the things that we do is we do prioritize applications based on where they if they have an offer they're ready to make uh we'll bump them up a little bit and try to try to help them meet that offer deadline when we can so um so that's that's a very politician answer i didn't give you a date or a timeline but that's kind of that the, the folk, I, we're trying to we try to get that approval turn time to 48 hours when we can um and we've just hired, I think, seven new underwriters this week. So, so our hope is that we'll have, you know, the ability to turn these around pretty quickly. Once your client's approved, I mean, you're talking about hours between they see the home and the offer being in your hands. So it's best to get them approved now, like if you're working yep. with someone or you're going to just start to work with Yeah, it's like, it's All like, the, it's, the, the approval's good for, I want to say 60 days. And then, but at the end of 60 days, we'll reach out to them and give them the opportunity to renew their approval. Okay. Yeah, so we can keep them in the system for, you know, if they're willing to renew, if they're still interested uh, for a long period of time. It's, it's, that's actually a, uh, a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac guideline. So there's a, applications are only good for so, and approvals are only good for so long. Yes, ma'am. We're asking online what the minimum credits were for approval. 640. 640 is our min credit score today. Yep. You take care of clients with ITIN? Uh, we're working on an I-10 loan right now. We, we don't have one today, but if we, if they're working with a lender that has them pre-approved and we don't have a loan product to fit, uh, if they give us a pre-approval letter and we can verify that with the lender, then we feel confident we can move forward with them. So that's a, it's a, an exception sort of thing, but we can do that. Yep. Is yes, there sir. ever like a situation where you guys pre-approve someone buy the home and then they can't buy it back? Mm -hmm. That has happened very, very rarely, like less than one third of 1% of the time. Okay. So like three out of a thousand. What do you usually, okay. So, so it very rarely happens. Uh, the times it's happened when COVID hit, you know, somebody lost their business, they couldn't buy back from us. Um, we had a client that we bought a home for them. This was a, a tough one. We bought a home for them in Houston. They were selling a home in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The home that they were selling after they moved in the home we bought for them got hit by a hurricane no. and destroyed oh. and they had to rebuild it. Yeah. So Tough situation. So we actually let them stay in the, in the rental period for uh, almost two years while we, they rebuilt their house. Yeah, that's like an exception to the rule, but but we're human and we when we see a situation, we're going to yeah. respond accordingly. Yeah. We've had people that have lost a job mm -hmm. and we gave them a little bit of extra time to get a new job in order to qualify and close. So it's like there are some protections around a buyer where they're not just going to like automatically default and just be screwed up. Right. Yeah. We, we don't make money by keeping people's earnest money. You know, if they, now we have had clients that we bought a home for them and they just, they just up and decided, eh, I don't want to, I don't want to buy this house back. Yeah. And in that case, yeah, we keep their earnest money. Gotcha. It's kind of a bummer, but that's, and then you can read oh, perfect. Too. Okay, cool. So I have a few on here. Yep. What if you, um, so you've got clients, I've got a few that are already pre-approved. Mm -hmm. Then how do I tell them, oh, but we can buy it for cash now or whatever. Do yep. We have that pre-approval letter given to you or do you have to Lender so if they're yeah. pre-approved, we do still need them to run through our application process. So if they're approved with another lender, run through our application process, and then we we grant them an approval. So we need to verify everything before we're going to put, because we're putting our cash out to buy the house, right? Okay. So, yep. Now, they can still use the other lender if they want, or they can use our mortgage <laughs> company. They get to make that decision. They can do an apples to apples comparison. And, Sometimes yep. they'll be like, but then it's going to hit my credit again. We actually don't pull their credit when they do an application. We do a soft pull on the credit. Okay. Which doesn't affect their score. So, yes, sir. Is there any different working with VA bonds? Like There's a couple of procedural things we do differently because of the way the VA appraisals get handled, right. but 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 functionally it works exactly the same with VA. Yeah, we love working with VA clients. They're, they're yeah. 
Yeah. And that's this is a phenomenal tool for my newer agents. Like if you're offering a solution to a VA buyer who cannot get a home accepted to save their life, like right. that is a tremendous asset that you're putting out there. Yeah. Like you could blow it up with videos and videos Yeah. And I think if you have a, a community of VA buyers that you serve, like this is a perfect fit for a VA buyer because their their offer shows up as a zero down loan. And so sellers think this is like a, a a non contender they think it's like almost like a you know contingent on you know the stars aligning type one and it's not it's it's a good solid loan it's unfortunate that sellers see it that way but we can help them upgrade to be that cash buyer so they're more likely to win so yep mm -hmm. so fha is kind of funny because the uh uh, the FHA guidelines, so the, the federal housing is the HUD, HUD guideline on an FHA loan is that the home that the client's buying has to have been owned by the seller for more than 90 days. So an FHA buyer actually doesn't work because we're going to try to sell it right back to them and we can't. But most of our FHA buyers, we move them to a different loan product, you know, a 5% down or a 3% down conventional, and we get them approved that way. So, so we can't perform an, an FHA loan on the back end when they buy back from us, but that client who's FHA approved, oftentimes we can get them into a loan product that works, and then we can make make the deal happen. So, but they need a 640. minimum six forty credit score. Yep, yep. Um, so, uh, let me hit a couple of these online, and then I'm gonna yeah. So, um, what the question I'm looking at here is, how do you work with a client who is pre-approved but has no cash and no home to sell? Um, this is this is tough. Um, I had this call from an agent this morning. He said, hey, I've got, I've got three clients. They just don't have any cash. That does, but doesn't work for us. And here's why it doesn't work. They still, if there's an appraisal shortfall, they still need to be able to cover that gap when they buy back from us. So we, we work with them. We're, we're very custom to when that appraisal comes up short, how do we modify the loan to make this happen? Like we do this all day, every day. Uh, but if they literally have, like the guy called me and goes, hey, look, they've got $5,000 cash in the bank in this market. And they're buying a $300,000 home. Like it's going to be tough. So in a stabilized market, this would be even more powerful. I think it is. I mean, some people are like, "Oh, you know, when this market cools, you won't have any value." But I'm like, "No, this is as valuable." Like, I think in a super soft market, this is killer. Like when you can bring in, like, start make just make tons of cash offers. Like you get pretty aggressive. So. So. Um, um, excuse yeah. me. I asked yes. that question, um, and I was thinking of first home buyers, which you previously addressed. Mm -hmm. So the person who has no cash but is trying to buy. If you can't help them, what would you suggest? Like, can, do they go take a cash loan? Do they go ask their I, family? I, I, or I, I mean, we can help if, if they have gift funds, we can help. So that's, okay. that's my so default. Always... Cash. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I default to gift loan. Um, and, and here they can get it. They can receive a gift and I'm doing air quotes for those that can't see me. Um, yeah. they receive a gift and then they can refinance you know, a year later, the house is going to be worth like a zillion dollars, right? And they do a cash out refi and they can, you know, they can gift back to whoever gifted them. So, um, so, so you're looking yeah. for somebody in that case that might have a bonus, a known bonus or a known inheritance. Known, known bonus, that, you know, a rich uncle, a cousin, you know, um, I've suggested rich uncle before and then the rich uncle just bought the house for him. And, and so like, uh, so they kind of, kind of lost a deal there, but you know, that it, I think that this is a market that requires us to think creatively and, and that creativity, you, you, you need to ask family members, Hey, can you, can you chip in? Like, otherwise they're not going to get in the market and they're going to, the increase for three years, okay. if the house is worth 60% more than what they paid. Um, that would have been a tragedy to miss out because you're short on a little bit of, a little bit of funds. So we're listing um, the home, right? What's that? We're listing the home for them. The home yeah, that they're right now. Yeah, the home that they're selling, you're going to list for them. Mm -hmm. And you guys keep all your commissions. We don't touch commissions. How does that work when you're representing a buyer? Uh -huh. and you're technically the buyer. Like, does that make sense? Like, do you, where, like, how does representation work? So, because our interests are perfectly aligned with your client, we want to get the best deal possible. They want to get the best deal possible. And they're calling all the shots. Uh, the, the way structurally it works, and this is like a more of a, like, broker type legal question. So we signed a limited services buyer's representation agreement with you. So you represent us on the purchase. And the second that we close, our representation with you ends and your representation with your client steps in. Now, 
during that period where you represent us, your clients are calling the shots. And so we're, we're in effect, you're still advising them. They're telling us what to do and then we're doing it. So, all right. So it's a lot of moving parts. As it starts to sink in, you'll have more questions. That's what your homeward advisor is here for. Yes, sir. You were talking about uh, earlier, you were talking about uh, that you charge, when you charge rent, you charge the cost of building a house. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And I understand that you, know, you can't, you can, you know, different prices, different rents, or whatever. But right. What am I supposed to tell a buyer? Like, can you give me a range or? On the rent? What's that? On the rental amount? Yeah, yeah it's 0. 0.0072 times the purchase price. Yeah. So we buy a house for five hundred thousand. It's thirty, thirty four seventy two is the amount of rent they're paying. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's a it's a fixed fixed rate. Okay. That's our cost of funds. Multiply that by twelve, and that's what our money costs. Yeah. It's called WAC, weighted average cost of capital. Usually, like usually two months or a month. Uh, two our months? our average rental period is forty five days on buy before you sell, and it's thirty days on. Buy with cash okay. or like 27, something like that. Yeah. So it's all contingent upon how long it takes to get that old home sold. So, all right. That's a lot. I've given you a lot of information and you're, di and you're digesting it. Yeah. Yeah. We're here for you. We, we, I recognize that. So when I think of fluency, you go from conscious and competency, meaning I know I don't know Spanish. So today you've learned a couple of words, right? So like you can get around, you know, so that's, that's called, uh, you go to like kind of this middle stage where it's like conscious competency, like I know enough to get around. And then what we wanna to get to is eventually, and, and once you've worked through the process with us, you'll get to what I call unconscious competency. You start to think in Spanish, you don't have to translate it. You don't have, it's not that extra effort to go into Spanish and back. And so like, we wanna build that fluency with you. And, and we're here to make that happen. So, so we'll do this training. We'll, we'll be in, you know, uh, available via phone. Our team's here to help coach and guide you through the process as well as, um, you know, I, I have dreams and aspirations that we'll certainly talk about of how we can continue to, to be providing value and, and delivering more content and info and information and You're understanding. Gonna come drink with us Thursday. I'm going to come drink with you on Thursday. Yeah. Gonna, <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll, you know, I, I want to spend time with you. I want to be a resource for you and make sure that our team is here to take care of your clients when they're ready to go. So, all right. So I am over time by five minutes. You're good. You're Thank fine. you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh -huh. And I yep. think we have lunch. Here. I think we should have lunch. All right. Yep. So everybody has to eat before you leave. You can't leave. Yeah. I'll shut down on you. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. We'll see you later. Thank you. 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 Thank you.